What's up guys, War here, and today we're talking about how to farm all the materials inside Diablo 3. Let's do it. Crafting materials are by far the most important materials inside of Diablo 3 to farm up better gear. These in combined with the bounty materials is gonna allow to use recipes one, two, and three inside the Kanaya's cube, which is gonna upgrade your gear to make you even stronger. Now, one of the best ways to farm these materials right now is doing bounties. Bounties, especially in season 26, one of the themes is giving double large herotic chests. So as long as you keep farming up bounties, you're gonna get double chests to get even more materials. Right now, herotic chests on T16 give 1.6 million gold, 135 blood shards, 90 reusable parts, 92 arcane dust, 35 veal crystals, six death breaths, and 22 bounty materials per cash. So all this is doubled in season 26. Even if the theme wasn't here, guys, farming these bounty caches is the best way to get these um, crafting materials and the bounty materials. Now, one of the things that happens for a lot of players in Diablo 3 is they get really low on reusable parts and arcane dust. One of the best ways that you can do when you have a lot of one material or another is to come into the Kanaya's cube and go over to recipes 7, 8, and 9, and you're going to be able to convert one of the veal crystals, arcane dust, or reusable parts into each other so right now i'm a little low on veiled crystals so i would probably convert one of the reusable parts or arcane dust into veiled crystals but you can do it another way so let's go ahead and do this we're gonna change these into veiled crystals or into reusable parts so what i did was is that i just spent a hundred of my veiled crystals with a regular item to make crafting materials now you can do this with any of these three they're all interchangeable as long as you have an item to do it so the best way to get these items is to go to merchants guys unless you're playing the game naturally and you're getting them from doing rifts or anything like that the merchants sell the magic and then the regular items the regular gray ones now if a merchant doesn't sell them what you can do is just go to another spot on the map doesn't matter where you go just check all the home bases and just see if somebody has them so like, uh, okay, so she has Ascended Crown, so you just buy a couple, and then you're able to go back into the Kanaya's Cube, go over to the recipe, and then interchange these however you want. Now, if you go to each act, and none of the merchants have any gray items because those are the ones that you're looking for, you can go over here to the Battlefields of Eternity. That's another place that you can go to farm these. And what you can do is you can just look for the... Oh my god, if I can get a move on here... Oh my god, why am I lagging so hard? I'm trying to do a video here. Alright, so you can go and find these the little decaying armors. They're always going to drop the great um, items. And then you just go back to town. So early on, if you don't have a lot of mats or you know, you're not playing seasonal or you just don't have a lot in general, then you can go to the Battlefields of Eternity and just farm these. There's a lot of other places where you can get them too, but that's just the most notable one by everybody. So then you're able to just to farm these as much as possible. If you don't want to go to the Battlefields of Eternity, you can always just back out, reset the game, and then go find merchants until you can buy a bunch and then convert them over. Now, when it comes to the Veiled Crystals, Death Breasts, and Forgotten Souls, these are the big boys when it comes to materials, especially when you get to Torment 16 and beyond and you're just playing Paragon levels for Endgame. You're going to be going through these a lot. So when it comes to the Veiled Crystals, the best way to get those along with the Death Breasts is just to come over and do Rifts. You want to do regular Rifts, and then just keep farming those over and over again because as you continue to get blood shards, you're going to be able to go to Kadala and just purchase these. And then all the, the yellow items that you're going to get, you're just going to go over to the uh, blacksmith and just farm them. And keep in mind, guys, the reusable parts, arcane dust and veiled crystals, they all salvage for a lot. Like the reusable parts, I think are eight a piece. These are six a piece. And I think those are one a piece. Forgotten souls are also one a piece if you do legendaries. So doing normal rifts and then greater rifts for the uh, forgotten souls are the two best ways to get these crafting materials in Diablo three. Now, if you don't have a lot of keystones to be able to see, I have 71. If you don't have a lot of keystones to be able to do these, then you just have to farm Nephilim rifts. And the best way to do that, guys, is to equip your follower. If you guys didn't know a, way, a while back, Blizzard changed it to where your follower could be equipped with these items to help you out so it doesn't take away from your actual kit or your setup. So you want to equip your follower with the Sage's set along with the Cane set. The Sage's set is going to give you double Death's Breast, and the Sage's set is going to have a 25% chance for an extra Greater Rift Keystone to drop. 
Now I'm wearing four of these because I'm using the Ring of Royal Grandeur to reduce the set cost. And you can use all six if you wanted to, but I recommend you only using four with the Ring of Royal Grandeur. Another reason you want to equip your follower up is using the Nemesis Bracers along with the Flavor of Time, not only to make pylons will last twice as long, but the Nemesis Bracers will spawn champions so you can, guys can get even more death breaths. Now, one other thing for your follower, I'm using the Enchantress Focus, which gives all access to all skills from my follower. But if you notice when you're out doing normal rifts that your follower keeps dying and can't keep up so you get those triggers, especially off of the Nemesis Bracers, then you want to use the other one where your follower just can't die. Now, if you happen to use the one where your follower can't die, you want to select the skills like this. You want to use Temporal Pulse, Amplification, Erosion, and then Fate's Last. This is going to allow you to get the maximum benefit from your follower while you're out there farming the regular rifts, which is great for just farming these materials up. I'm a little low on Death Breast, but I have used them just to make a bunch of new gear. So I wouldn't recommend that. I would just stack on these and save these as much as possible. But doing greater rifts and regular rifts is the best way to farm up those materials. All right, guys, that's going to do it for how to farm all the crafting materials inside of Diablo 3. Now, if you're not playing Season 26, then still do bounties for all of these materials overall. But then make sure you're doing the rifts for your death press, your crystals, and your forgotten souls. And then make sure you don't forget to convert those items if you have too much of one or another inside of the cube, guys. Let me know down in the comments if this has helped you. And if it has, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here. And as always, stay gaming, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.